guys ever have those mornings where you wake up and you think, oof, I messed up. Oh, my legs. I'm getting too excited. I need to calm down. Oh, I think I'm gonna like it. <laughs> You know, that's not how I want to find out that I didn't build this structurally sound. Anthropology, cross pottery barns, kind of vibes. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, everyone. Today, we're in my lounge room, or soon to be lounge room. So if you saw my video last week, I did some DIY pendant lights. One of them was for an upcoming lounge room makeover that I'm working on. Today is another DIY project, but on a slightly larger scale, I have decided to build a DIY lounge. I will pop up a couple of inspiration pictures for you guys so you kind of get the idea of what I'm going for. I will be doing a full lounge room makeover in the coming weeks, but because this project is going to be a fairly large undertaking because not only am I building the DIY lounge, I will also be sewing the fabric cover myself. I have basic sewing machine skills. Hi, are you coming to join? You want to join? Oh, you're so good. We're gonna start with part one, which is actually building the frame for the lounge and getting it stained and everything. You don't belong downstairs, nor do my white pants. So you're gonna have to hop down and I'm gonna get changed and then we're gonna head into my basement and start making the actual frame. Before I actually start to build the frame, I do wanna cut out the foam that I'm going to use. This is 72 inches. We want it to be five foot, which is less than 72 inches um it is 60 inches <laughs> so we want the whole thing to be around about five foot i just have a hobby knife i do have some box cutters i have two box cutters i just don't know where they are so i'm hoping the hobby knife works if not then i might have to use a knife from the kitchen which would be less than ideal but you know sometimes you gotta make do so we're just gonna mark off five foot and then get to cutting. Well, it's working actually really well, so that's good. <laughs> Pretty clean, not too bad. So I guess I'll save this for a different project at some later stage. So I've got two one by five by eights here and I'm pretty sure that that should be more than enough for the base framing pieces. So because the foam is five inches, uh, five inches, <laughs> five feet, it means that we need to add an inch and a half to this. So they're about three quarters. So we add an uh, inch and a half to the measurement, which will take us to 61.5 inches. If you guys have been following me for a while, you'll know that I'm kind of like a learn on the go, trial and error, self-taught kind of gal. And this is definitely one of those situations I've obviously never made this style of lounge before. I have done an outdoor lounge, which if you haven't seen that, shameless plug, go check it out. But for this, it's a little different. And I really want to make sure I get my measurements right because A, wood is expensive, but also foam is really expensive. So I can't really afford to mess it up. So I wanted to share with you the small challenge that I ran into and that was with my measurements. So I will actually pop up at the end of the video a little diagram with all of the correct measurements that I used but in the clips they may not be 100% correct because I'm trialing an error. So one of the things that I realized was I didn't factor in the legs. So what I've actually done is on the other end I did a little test and I cut out the corners of the foam. So I need to do the same on this end so that I can cut these side pieces to the correct length because currently they're too long. So we're just gonna mark off the little part of the foam that I need to cut out, cut that out and then get the correct measurements for this so that we can have the right shape. After making those adjustments, this is what we're working with, which is pretty much perfect. Now that I've got all of that sorted out, the measurements correct, the foam sitting in the right place, we need to give these pieces a sand. And although normally I would save the sanding until a little later, I want to add a pretty decorative detail to this and sanding in between that is just going to be 
an absolute nightmare. I'm going in with a 220 grit sandpaper, smooth everything out, and then I will show you the decorative detail. Mm, I'm excited. Yeah. make this lounge have a little bit more character to it I really wanted to add a little piece of trim and I found this piece here which I thought was really pretty it is upside down currently <laughs> so it goes this way and I thought that that one was really pretty I did actually do a little not a poll but just like to see what you guys thought on Instagram where I put two different options so there was this one which most people voted for and then there was another one which is also really pretty this one was definitely the one that I was leaning towards as well so I'm happy that we all agreed and voted together. To add this trim piece, I do first need to use my mitre shears just to cut 45 degree angles because we're going to frame it out on the front and the two sides. If I have enough, I'll do the back, but I'm not as worried about doing the back as I am obviously about doing the front and the sides because that's what we'll be seeing. I do actually have to join these two pieces together because they didn't have this in a trim piece that was long enough. They only came in a 45, uh, 48 inches. So the question is, do I just join it flat or do I do a 45 degree and kind of like slot them in together? I might try the 45 degree because I think that that could be pretty. You know what, let's just try it, see what happens. I'll be honest, I think it looked a little more seamless before in some ways, but I've done it now, so I'm going to continue to do it. A little bit of wood filler works wonders, so that's what we'll do. I said I wasn't sure if I was going to frame out the back piece. I almost have enough, but I made a couple of mistakes. So I'm like so short. I think what I'm going to do is glue down what I have here. And then when I have to go back to Home Depot anyway to get some slats for the lounge, I'll see if they've got another piece of this in stock then. But for now, let's get all of these pieces glued down so this part can be all finished off and we can move on to putting it together. Ooh, or should I do my pocket holes first? Hey, that's an idea. Yeah, I think we'll do that and then we'll glue it down. Mm -hmm. Plan in place. ever have those mornings where you wake up and you think oof I messed up I definitely am feeling that a little bit this morning the framing stuff that I did is totally fine so that's all dried and we can take the tape off soon but the legs I bought the wrong size <laughs> I'm so annoyed at myself. I remember I was very tired when I went to Home Depot. This is a few weeks ago. And I looked at the shorter version of this, which is about 15 inches. This is 21. And I thought, no, 15, that's too short. It's much too short. I need, this is the one I need to get. And in my head, I was like, when I get home, I'll double check. Because obviously I don't plan sometimes. And I just went to Home Depot being like, I'll buy legs. I didn't check. It's now too late to return them. I've also taken the tags off and removed. There was a screw in the top so it's kind of like I just have to live with this or pay like another $150 for legs and instead I think I'm actually gonna cut the bottom off here it'll save me $150 and I can use this for something else am I devastated that I have to cut this pretty bit off a little bit am I okay with it because it saves me $150 yeah yeah I am let's cut the bottom off the legs <laughs> As far as attaching these pieces together goes, I've actually put a piece of MDF underneath the leg and the reason for that is, obviously we've got this little trim bit here and I want it to line up with the 
edge of the trim bit, so before it goes into the detail section. And I think, we're gonna test it, but I think the MDF is the perfect thickness to just raise the leg up a little bit so that it sits in the position that I want it to sit in. So we're going to test one, cross our fingers, and see if it works. It's not tired. I can hear the raindrops falling. Moment of truth. Oh, I think. Yes. It's pretty, pretty, pretty close. There's like a hair. Just, just a wee little hair difference. So I think I'm happy with that. So you can see here that the ridging part comes out, but it sits pretty flush right in on that seam. I'm happy with this. I'm going to do the other leg on this and then the other short side piece. It's always easier if you do the shorter pieces first, FYI. Ah! <laughs> I love it. One done. One done. One done. Oh. <laughs> okay. I'm getting too excited. I need to calm down. Oh, I think I'm gonna like it. I just have to get it down safely. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I love it. It's so good and everything I think lines up. <sighs> I'm very happy. I need to put a pin in that happiness and uh, get onto the support pieces, I think. I really need to get these supports added. So I've got the first one in position. You can see that I've actually lined up my two by two along the bottom, so it pretty much sits flush with the bottom. That's just gonna give enough room to account for the slats that will need to go in, and then also the foam on top, so it sits a little above and a little Below. We're going to use some 8x2 construction screws and that will mean that it won't pierce through the piece where we've got the decorative part on but it will just provide a little bit of support in there and I'm going to try and inset it a tiny bit. Wait, hold on. Put me together, take me back where I've been. We've got the main support pieces in for the slats, but I do want to add some additional structural support because I don't really want this to brack, I mean, <laughs> crack and or break. So brack underneath me, it just, you know, that's not how I want to find out that I didn't build this structurally sound. We are adding in some additional support pieces. I've got a 2x4 that we're going to pop down the middle. I'm about to put in some pocket holes into that and then we're going to attach it to the 2x2s two and I'm going to use a 2.5 inch screw so that it will go a little bit into the 1x5 on the front. So it's kind of like very, very sound. I've got these pieces here that have a 45 degree angle on each side and they'll just sit in here. To actually attach this, I am positive that I'm not doing this the correct way, but I'm doing it in a way that works and in the way that I could come up with. So for anyone who's actually professional and um, not a beginner like me, please just avert your eyes while I do this. It does work, but I'm sure it's wrong. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop 
for just finished prepping this piece by filling in the holes on the top of the legs also put wood filler on the rest of the piece in the corners and across any gaps that there were that needed to be filled that is now drying and we're going to get on to the wooden slats so I've got about 12 I think I cut 12 wooden slats and I need to pop on a pre-stain just going with the bare pre-stain and then I thought for the stain I would try something different so this is a stain and poly in one I've never tried a stain and poly in one before but I thought I'd give it a whirl today let's get the pre-stain on I need something to lift the lid in and out of love never get enough we never seem to get older when things are going right you seem to have the time but when it's hard you just grow cold up we should be good, but we keep lighting fires. The words you be, cause we're scared of the silence. We should be good, but we keep lighting fires. Fires around ourselves. We should be good, but we keep lighting fires. The words you be, cause we're scared of the silence. We should be good, but we keep lighting fires. Fires around ourselves. It's deja vu. So we've got two coats of the poly stain combo on and I'm just popping the slats in place so that we can um, use the nail gun and pop them in. But I do want to share my thoughts on the poly stain combination. I like it. I think it's good, but it's definitely not as flawless a finish as I would normally get if I was to use the stain first and then put on a top coat. There's a couple spots where the stain sort of pulled a little bit. It's all in areas where nobody's gonna see it so it's totally fine and doesn't bother me and the exterior part is looking really good so that's kind of what matters. For this particular project I think it has a really nice effect even though you can kind of see some of the brush strokes it looks a little bit like anthropology cross pottery barn kind of vibes and it definitely gives like the right aesthetic for this piece but on the inside section there are a couple spots where it did pull so that's not my favorite bit. I think if you were doing a spray paint Oh, not a spray paint, but using like a spray gun, I think you'd get a pretty much flawless finish. I assume you can probably use it in a spray gun, but I don't 100% know. Let's nail gun this down and take it upstairs. Ooh. up I did actually make some adjustments I actually ended up cutting some strips of the leftover foam that I had and patching it together so that it sits kind of on two levels so you've got the bit that sits inside the frame and then it hangs over the reason I did this is I just didn't like the corner um cut out bit with like the top part exposed it just didn't look quite right with the foam so I decided to go this patch option the fabric I'm actually using is a velvet fabric but it's from a set of curtains and the reason I went with this is because fabric is expensive and I'll be honest it was cheaper for me to buy curtains than it was for me to to get the fabric or the amount of fabric that I needed even if I need to buy another set it's still cheaper to do it that way so I've got all my measurements I need to unpick the seams on the fabric that I have here and then we're going to cut out the pieces now obviously I have made it a little more challenging for myself but you know what we're gonna make it work I believe let's get it happening I'm sorry. Yesterday there was sun and there was Nisha. rain. Beauty hey. in the Monday. Hey. And as okay. the light startled our eyes, we let go of disguise. And now there's 
something in the air and a sparkly shimmer on our skin. Restoring everything within. I really want to have like a tubing trim, I guess it's called. I don't know if that's actually what it's called. I've completely made that up. But basically where you have like something round, I've assumed that rope is normally involved. And then you put it in and kind of like wrap it around. So you've kind of got this action going on. You can't really tell more that way you can see. So that's what I want to do. And I've got two pieces ready to go. Before I cut out any more pieces, I just kind of want to like start the sewing process and make sure that, you know, everything's lining up and working well. In castles out of sand, reaching for the grand. This will always align. We lose track of time. Head up high, now we climb. Oh, oh, oh. Dream breezy, we go. We're on the home stretch. I have certainly not had an easy time with this. Um, and it's definitely no natural talent. No natural talent. I was kind of hoping that, you know, it might be an inherited thing from grandma who's so good at sewing, but um, yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to work on these skills. It's getting there. I have decided though that I'm not gonna pop in a zip. I'm kind of gonna do it as like a fold situation. So I've got half here and then I'll put the other half over the top. So it'll kind of like work that way. I couldn't find a zip that was big enough. And because I've made a couple mistakes with this. And so this is the best solution to actually get it to work. It's frustrating <laughs> that it's not perfect, but I think it'll look okay on top, which, you know, really that's like the main goal, I guess. So I'm going to get this bit sewn in and then the second part and then we're done, hopefully. I'm hoping that this next part is just like a little bit easier, but based on my experience so far, maybe not. <laughs> We have a whole lot of other things to do because we'll be doing the full lounge room makeover next week but for the lounge and the cushion covers I'm pretty much done at this there is a little bit of hand sewing that I do have to do but I am choosing to do that off camera and on another day when I haven't slept four hours yeah another day for the hand sewing I think but it's pretty good as far as I'm concerned I am happy it is comfortable it's green and I love it. Next week we've got the full laundry makeover so if you are not subscribed definitely do that and hit the bell notification so that you are notified when I upload a video every single week. You can also follow me over on Instagram as well. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Don't look at me like that. You know I can't resist you. It's too cute. This part. Oh. <laughs> What's happening? Oh it's just tracking my face. <laughs> oh take number two. I feel very regal. My velvet.